Well, flow really is a, a great powerful tool. And the thing that I've kind of over my years of working with it is recognize that it's not just um, a fancy tool that's in your, your toolbox. It's really like it's the, the power of Apex programmatic development with a simpler to use UI on top of it. So Sandy is a consultant. She's been working with Flow for a number of years. She'll be found at dreaming events, at Salesforce events talking about Flow. She's also a Salesforce well-architected ambassador and an MVP. With Flow, you can do almost everything that you can do with Apex and it's continuing to grow. It just, it can really help you conquer some complicated business requirements. Oh, hang on, but you just said you could do almost anything, which means you could do <laughs> almost anything. So there's there's a double-edged sword there. Surely if it's as powerful Absolutely. as Apex, we need to be thinking more, more like a developer. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And I think because Flow is as almost, almost as powerful as Apex, um, there are some things that we have to be responsible for to really make sure that we're, we're serving our organizations well and keeping our orgs safe and healthy. And you can do a lot of things by accident um, without just without realizing it's not, you know, no malicious intent. Um, it's just not quite being familiar enough with what can happen. Um, so I think conquering the thought process of a clicks versus code um, approach is really to understand what is that code-based approach, to really to kind of put some guardrails around yourself. So maybe I misspoke. Maybe it's not thinking like a developer. It's more thinking like an architect. It's actually about design oh. and then development. Yes, absolutely. Right? So it's it's... That, that mindset, that thought process of really making sure, okay, let's stop and think about what we want to do. What are the, the guidelines, the limits, the implications, and designing what we really want to happen and designing what, what, what should we do if things go wrong? As well as we're designing for what we want to happen when things go right, but we don't want to also need to think about what do we do when something goes wrong? What do you mean by goes wrong? As in, we've, what, have we broken the org? <laughs> well, hopefully not that far, but I mean, we could, right? But for, mostly for things to go wrong when, say we're asking a flow to go and look for some records that we want to update. But okay, well, what, what do we do if the system can't find those records? Uh, we, need, we need to give the system an out to be able to handle gracefully if it can't do what we're asking it to do whether or not that it is maybe the user that you're running the flow as doesn't have access to the records that you're asking it to do something with. We need to have a plan for that. So um, really, again, that design thinking of let's before we start building, before we start playing with uh, all the fancy buttons and things, and I, I love playing in flow, um, but m my first step has uh, really, be, it, my necessary step is taking that time to think through and design um, everything that I want to happen. So, okay, so it's design, but then once you've got that mm -hmm. design, you can then go and build it in flow, but then you can then build your test patterns because of course, yes. it's not just a happy path. You've also got to work no. out, you've got to be <laughs> testing all those other paths. Yeah. Right, and testing in general is a concept that I'm so very glad that I learned about. Um, my my trajectory through the Salesforce ecosystem, I, I started out as an admin, never knew an ounce about code or programmatic development in general. But when I took some time and really understood the concept of testing, unit testing in particular, from the programmatic standpoint, um, now I really can say, all right, yes, I do. I am planning for the happy, but I need to give the system a way to deal with what, what happens if it doesn't work. So learning about both positive and negative testing from the programmatic standpoint um, really served me well and makes my flows better and my, keeps my work safer. So let, let's go back and think about this sort of, you said you need to architect this. So have you got... Mm -hmm 
some several sort of steps in mind that you should be going through as you plan, as you build, as you test, as you deploy? Yes, I think so, definitely. Um, for me, I like to, first of all, make sure I research what else is happening in the org, right? So not only am I gathering requirements and I'm trying to understand what am I trying to do, but I'm also trying to, to build out my, my knowledge of what else is happening, right? So I will take some time to do some research, really look into the org, what other automation is happening on those objects or the records that I'm trying to deal with. Um, then I will kind of walk through the steps of who are the users that will be, uh, this automation will be running as, and I'll kind of make a list of those, um, making sure I, I provide a, a way for my flow to test, well, can that user do what I'm wanting it to do? Um, then I will actually kind of make sure that I have some real life sample data that I'm testing as um, to make sure that the flow can actually do on a regular everyday um, scenario what I'm asking it to do. Um, and I think that the, it's those steps of really trying to make sure while I'm designing, I'm researching, I'm sketching things out. I'm thinking through the what ifs. What if is it good? What if if it doesn't do what I want it to do? And then I start to build a little bit, um, making sure I kind of uh, test along the way. So let me pick a couple of things out of that. First of all, there's research. So the yes. part of that would also maybe what process builder workflows already exist if we're migrating, what, what workflow rules exist. So are we migrating those? Yes. The second is the D word. You're actually documenting. You're actually writing down <laughs> oh, I, what the flow should look like, architecting it, who the users are. Um, then you're building it and then you're testing it. But hey, this has all been done in production, so there's no need to deploy. Is that, is that <gasps> true? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I have to say it's one of my, what my, my pet peeves is that I don't think that flows should be able to be built and turned on in production. I really wish that they had to go through the same um, rigorous testing and deployment process that Apex does. Like, again, I think that it's, it's on par of the powerful um, nature of Apex and Apex has guardrails in place that you cannot um, you know, put a, a, an Apex class directly in production without having a deployment um, process and testing process. So I think you, flow should have the same thing, but it, even though it's not required, I think all of us should really take that um, approach of absolutely do not build a flow in production, even if you think it's the easiest flow ever and it's you're only do, asking it to do the most of basic of tasks, it doesn't matter. Start in a sandbox and do your thorough testing. So I think there's an interesting point you made there, which is, you Apex, you can't deploy, you can't do it in production. You have to do it through a sandbox and deploy it. But also you have to have right. test coverage. Yes, you do. So you need to think about what's my test coverage for a flow, even though it's mm -hmm. not forcing you to do that. But the, the cool bit is they've just launched uh, the ability to start building tests. They have, right? So I, the concept of testing is so important. I am extremely glad that Salesforce has offered these tools for us to build our testing right in the flow builder. Um, and I think to be able to really serve um, our orgs well, someone be, would be really good at spending their time of un studying and understanding the concept of testing for Apex um, before they look at these declarative tools as well. But um, it, it's, I'm, I think it's a fabulous thing that Salesforce has added. But that's only unit testing. So it's actually mm -hmm. helping you understand what the flow does. It doesn't understand the flow in yep. the context of the overall business process. So that's where you're going to go back yep. to your overall documentation and go, okay, actually, is yes. this delivering what the end users need rather than mm -hmm. is it is it making the changes to the, the records that I wanted? So I think there's this two level as well where you need to step back and go, okay, I created some user requirements. I then did some design documentation. I then built some flow, I tested it, I deployed it. Um, but the testing is at two levels before you deploy. Quick note there, mm -hmm. how many things did we just mm -hmm. talk about which were nothing to do with build, building the flow? All of them but one. So there's quite a lot of stuff we do around the outside of it. 
and to actually make a flow work. Absolutely. And I think that those are the most important things. Um, and I think oftentimes they get a little bit pushed to the side from a, from a timeline perspective, right? Um, but I think investing your time and doing all of those things will, will really make the times, um, time to value faster and you'll save more time in the long run because you'll avoid problems and have a really well architected system um, that can scale and um, continue to serve the business down the road rather than having to either restructure or refactor something later on. So you're not building in technical debts because you took some shortcuts. Oh. Uh, there's another thing, <laughs> there's kind of documentation debt, which I would say because I love documentation. But the point is if you haven't documented what this flow does and then you come back to it six months later, I'm trying to unpick it and understand what it's done. At, or if it's not you, it's somebody else is really hard. So that idea of actually making sure that you've thought through, documented the flow before you build it, and then the test plans are documented means when you pick it yes. back up later, it's a lot easier. So you said something, yes. uh, uh, you just said well-architected. So hmm. presumably this is, I mean, a flow needs to be architected. So are there some resources that we could send people to so they can design flows better, so they can think about the things you've talked about? Absolutely. I, I happen to be one of Salesforce's well-architected ambassadors, and I've been very, very pleased to have some uh, insight onto the development of the resources uh, through the, the well-architected program. And if you visit architect.salesforce.com, there are some really great resources, especially around um, this type of automation right there on the website. And um, I, I've, I use it every time I'm going to start building a flow, just to remind myself of what are the best practices, what are things I should be looking out for. Um, they keep it as up to date as they can. And I go back to it all the time. So that's architects.salesforce.com. Fantastic. So do you have one final thought for our listeners? Have fun, but be responsible while you're doing it. Um, Okay, I, I love using Flow. I think it's an, a powerful tool. Um, I can do, make it do a lot of things. Um, but the number one thing is stop, research, and think uh, about what you're doing. Draw it out first and then keep going. So um, take a little time for some learning. Uh, even if it's your uh, not your comfortable zone, at me again as an admin, I didn't think I ever wanted to learn anything about development. And again, I don't code, but understanding the core concepts of the why really have uh, served me well. So spending some time to understand the, the core concepts of what Apex can do.